Hello, Trash Car, Car Real Estate. I uh, wanted today review a question that comes up on a lot of private equity entrance exams for incoming analysts and associates. I see it a lot in the real estate space. Of course, you can see it in other sort of PE shops. A uh, question reads something like this. Uh, this is from an actual exam. Um, produce cash flows for the investment, um, calculate internal rate of return, equity multiple, what have you. Do you sell it in year five or year seven and why? Model will be evaluated on flexibility, accuracy, presentation. Want to deal with flexibility and presentation here. Uh, accuracy, let's just assume the math is right. So I've got a very stripped down example that shows you a quick way to build this sort of answer. Let's say you have something you're buying for 110 and this has been assumedly given to us in the model, we're buying it for 110 million. And we want to vary, are we selling it in year five or year seven? And we want to vary what we're selling it for. Uh, maybe we're selling it at a 7% yield, a seven and a quarter, seven and a half. That was also given to us on, in this exam, um, though you, you didn't see that, but just trust me, it asks you to vary what you sell it for. So here is a string of net operating incomes, uh, seven and a half, seven and a half, blah, 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 going up to nine million in year six, assumingly there's some event there. So first off, we have a very simple calculation that says, let's figure out if we're selling it in year five or year seven, what we're selling it for. Um, in this case, we're saying, okay, if you're selling it in year five, you want year six as income, because generally when you sell it at the end of year five, uh, you'll probably use a four 12 months. So you'll use, in this case, um, you know, year six. Actually, I should have thrown a false in here just to make the H look up a little bit more stable. That's okay. Uh, let's say we sell it in year, year five using year six. Uh, that's the array where we're looking. We're taking the second value. So in other words, um, if we sell it in year five, we use year six as income, which in this case is J25 or 9.2 million. And we're going to divide that by the cap rate. And you can confirm it's working by taking this, dividing it by this. Sorry. Yeah, this, dividing it by that. That's 131. And if I make it 7, we can confirm that that's working by taking that and dividing it by that. Okay, so far everything seems to work. That's 142. That's 142. Beautiful. So then we build a simple cash flow. We're in for 110. We've got some stream of cash flows. That's from above. We're selling it either in year seven or in year five. How did I make that flexible? Really only a couple pieces to make it work. The first is a simple if statement that says, if the year we're in, uh, compare the year we're in, year six, to when we're selling, and if the year we're in is greater than or equal to the year we're selling, then pull down line 25, not zero. In other words, once we're past year five, put in a zero and put in a zero. And then a simple calculation here that says, if this is the sale year, basically, uh, if we're in year five, then pull in the sale price, and if not, pull in zero. So here in year five, that pulls in the sale price, here, it puts in a zero, so that gives us a flexible line 33. So if we're selling it in year five or year seven, it seems to work. Also works if we sell it in, say, year six or year four. There's nothing that says it has to be five, six, or seven. And then down here, the IRR calculation works correctly. It's just saying what's in, what's out. Uh, in those future years where we have zeros, it just doesn't discount those values. So um, that's going to work correctly. The proof that that is correct is if I just do these normally, we get 9.9 .9 blah, 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 9.9 .9 blah, blah, blah. You can see it's working, right? It's always good to double check to make sure your understanding is correct. The equity multiple is take the sum of the future divided by the present. Since the present is a negative, I flip the sign by putting in a minus there. 
that does our equity multiple in our IRR. I then built a data table. But what I did here, this is kind of fun. I used a choose function. And my choose function is saying, if there's a one in C39, solve for E35, if not solve for E36, so that either does an IRR or an equity multiple, IRR equity multiple, and this is a good old fashioned data table that basically says, take what's in D23, that's the sale year, uh, take what's in D26, that's the cap rate, and build a data table. I've got videos on how to build data tables. If you don't know about that, you can check those out. Of course, the problem here is that if I do IRR, the formatting is nice. If I do equity multiple, though, the formatting is a little ugly. I'd rather it look like 1.53 instead of 153%, because again, that's kind of ugly. Uh, there are various ways to solve the formatting issue. My preference is to use a text function. And a text function basically says, okay, here's my RR, here's my equity multiple, force it to be formatted in this specific way. So in this case, I'm forcing the IRR to always appear as a percentile. And I'm forcing the equity multiple to always appear as a number dot number number, basically two spaces after the decimal, no percentile. And then here, instead of doing the choose function that pulls in the IRR or the equity multiple, I pull in the pre-formatted ones with the text. And now if I put in a one, I get my IRR. If I put in a two, I get some equity multiples. Good times. And that is how you would, I believe, build something that was flexible in year five or year seven and maintain flexibility and have a neato little presentation. Obviously, you could clean it up more with colors and, you know, lines and all kinds of silliness. But mechanically, I think that explains how to build a flexible sale date model. Uh, and don't get me wrong, there are other ways to do this. I used, you know, here, I used an HLOOKUP. I realize HLOOKUP suck. A lot of people can opine about why HLOOKUPs are horrible. You could use other tools. You could use an X lookup. You could do an index match. You could do some ifs. There are lots of ways to solve this, but I did an H lookup because that's something that a lot of people know. Um, and, um, you know, it's easy. Anyway, if this is the kind of stuff that fills you with joy the way I'm filled with joy when I'm building spreadsheets, uh, you can check out my website at kahrrealestate.com or email me funexcelfacts at josh at carrealestate.com. Hopefully you found this to be beneficial and, uh, you know, keep on building better models. Thanks. Bye.